This is VOA News via remote. I'm Marissa Melton. U.S. President Joe Biden is warning of higher costs at home as he takes another step to punish Russia for the Ukraine invasion. AP Washington correspondent Sagar Magani reports. The president says the U.S. is banning all Russian oil imports, aimed at cutting off part of a steady stream of Moscow's income amid other crippling financial sanctions. Another powerful blow to Putin's war machine. He'd been resisting the move out of fears it would push up already high gas prices at home. AAA says a gallon now costs on average a record $4.17, up 10 cents in one day and 55 cents since last week. We're going uh, much, much higher. Oil analyst Tom Closes says it will happen fast. The president says he gets it. But, but, but. He's warning the energy industry against exploiting the situation with excessive increases. Sagar Magani, Washington. The latest figures from UN Human Rights Office puts the number of civilian casualties in Ukraine at 406 with about 800 injured, though they believe the true number of casualties is much higher than what's recorded. At a United Nations news conference, spokesman Stefan Dujaric says more people are being displaced, injured, and killed. More than 2 million Ukrainians have now crossed international borders out of Ukraine. According to the UN's Human Rights Office, between the 24th of February and the 7th of March, at the end of the day, 1,335 civilian casualties were recorded which includes 474 people killed. UN High Commissioner for Human Rights Michelle Bachelet says the conflict has triggered a humanitarian crisis. This is VOA News. European Union officials on Tuesday defended the 27-nation bloc's decision to ban Russian state-controlled media outlets from broadcasting in the region as decisive steps to check a Kremlin-led information war. The EU has decided to suspend the broadcasting activities of Sputnik and RT Russia today in the bloc until Russia ends its war in Ukraine and stops its disinformation campaigns in member states. British Transport Minister Grant Shapps said in a tweet Tuesday that any Russian aircraft to enter UK airspace will now be considered a criminal offense. McDonald's, Starbucks and Coca-Cola have announced they will suspend business in Russia. Pepsi said it will stop selling soft drinks there, but Pepsi said it would continue its operations that manufacture milk, dairy products and baby formula and food, partly as a humanitarian effort but also to keep its 20,000 manufacturing and 40,000 farm workers employed. McDonald's has 850 outlets in Russia. Starbucks has 130. On March 7th, conductor Thomas Sanderling, who is 79, stepped down as the head of the Novosibirsk Philharmonic Orchestra in protest against Russia's invasion of Ukraine. He has positioned himself against a blanket boycott, uh, boycott however, of Russian art and artists. Vasily Petrenko, artistic director of the Moscow-based State Academic Symphony Orchestra of Russia, has also suspended his work in protest. AFP is reporting that Sudanese security forces arrested a senior opposition leader Tuesday as officers fired tear gas to stop thousands of protesters rallying against last year's military coup. Sudan's Unionist Alliance, a pro-democracy political party, said prominent politician Babikar Faisal was arrested while he was attending a funeral in North Khartoum. Faisal was a member of the committee tasked with recovering properties seized during Omar al-Bashir's three-decade rule. Bashir was ousted from office in 2019. He was then incarcerated, tried, and convicted on multiple charges of corruption. South Korea's military reported Tuesday it fired warning shots at a North Korean patrol boat that crossed the de facto inter-Korean sea border off the peninsula's west coast. In a statement, South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff said the skirmish occurred as South Korean authorities detained another North Korean vessel that had also crossed the so-called Northern Limit Line. The statement added the North Korean patrol boat, which was pursuing the first vessel, retreated after South Korea's military fired the warning shots. South Korea's military detained the other vessel and brought it to a nearby island. Via remote, I'm Marissa Melton, VOA News.